So let's have a look at how you can use and work with components in Angular. So we've got one component set up at the moment, which is our app component, but we don't want to be putting all of our code into one single file and one single template. We want to make small reusable bits of code and bits of UI that we can then compose and bring together to make a larger application. So we'll take an example of how we can break some of what we've already got down into components. Let's say we wanted to create a button component that has different styles depending on different values that we pass into it. Let's look at how we can create that button component and make variations of it. So I'm just going to stop the app from serving. And if you've got the Angular CLI installed, we can use that to generate a new component. So you can use ng generate and then component. And then I'm just going to pass in the standalone option as well. Standalone components are something that's relatively new, but it'll make it easier to understand what's going on in this example. And then we just give our component a name. So I'm just going to call it button in this example. And then what the CLI will do is it'll generate several different files for us, including the component code, the TypeScript file, and also the template and styling that we need for our button component. And we can see that over here. We can see the template, which just has a paragraph tag inside it with some text at the moment. And the TypeScript code is where the component is defined and we can set up any data properties or anything that we want to use in the template as well. So to use the button component and replace the existing button that we've got in our app, we need to grab its selector. And this is what you use to actually reference it in another part of your template or another component in your app. So if we go to the template code for the app component, you can see here we've got the existing button. Let's just comment that out for the moment. And then we just need to put a reference to the app button uh, in that template code, and that should actually give us the uh, paragraph tag on our page. So if we save that and just start the server again, we should find actually that we get an error because there's one more step to get this component available to be used throughout the app. And that is to actually add it as an import in the app component. So we need to let the app component know what the button component is and where it can be found. So what we need to do in this imports property of the component decorator is actually put a reference to the button component to let the app component know where it is and how to use it. So we've got a button component here and that will also add the import in there for us as well. And if we save that, you can see the app is now loading and you can see this paragraph tag is here now as well, which is the template code for the button component. But of course, we don't just want to have the text of button works. We actually want a button element to be displayed uh, for this component. So let's head on over to the actual template for the button component. And I'm going to create a button and I'm going to give it some text called click here. And you can see now we're getting a button with that text inside. So we've kind of recreated what we had initially, but this component isn't very flexible because it will always say click here and actually clicking the button doesn't actually do anything either. So we need to make our button component a bit more flexible by providing it with some inputs. So here in the TypeScript code for the button component, we want to create a couple of things that we can pass in to the button component when we use it. And we do that using an input decorator. So that looks a bit like this. We use at input and then with parentheses after it, we can give the input to the button component a name. So let's call it text, for example. And of course, we're using TypeScript here, so we need to pass in a type for the input. And it's going to be a string and we'll just give it a default value as well. Uh, so the default value will be uh, click here. So what this does is it actually creates another property on this class, much in the same way we did in previous lessons where you can just put some data like a title or something like that into your component. So we can actually use this text here uh, within the button component. And instead of just having hard coded uh, text of click here, we'll just use template interpolation uh, to interpolate the text property. And you can see because we've set a default value, it still says click here. But if we go over to the app component template, but what we have now on the button component is the ability to pass in some data via the input. And we do that in Angular using the square brackets and the input name was text. And if we pass in a string of something else, so change me, for example, you'll see that when the app reloads, the text on the button also changes. And it's worth noting if you do actually remove the square brackets here, you can just pass in a normal string without the quotes and that will work as well.
to something, some different text. And you can see that is working exactly the same way. So we can set up as many of these inputs as we like, and we can pass in different data like arrays and objects. And we can also pass in variables that are defined within the top level component. In this case, it's the app component directly into the button component. So for example, we've got the title, which is set up as a property or a member variable on this class. So we can pass that in as a variable to the text input on the app button make sure we've got the uh, square brackets around the text property there. And you can see now we're taking that value that's stored in title on the app component and passing it as an input into the button component. So passing in inputs is great, but we might want to actually get some data out of the button component as well. For example, what happens if we click on the button, we might want to trigger something, some activity in the app component. So let's have a look at how you could do that. In the button component class, what we're going to do, instead of creating an input, we're going to create an output. And what we'll have here is we generally give it a name, sort of an action, a verb that's kind of something's happened. So we're going to uh, say maybe uh, button clicked, for example, something quite descriptive. And what we do for an output is we assign it the result of a new event emitter object. So we'll give it event emitter, which is a special object in Angular, which will essentially pass a message up to the parent component and trigger the output uh, in the app component that we're after. And we'll see how that works in just a second. But essentially what we need to do is configure some kind of action to pass a value to this event emitter when the button is clicked in the button component here. So I'm going to create a new function. We'll call it this button clicked just to give it a bit of a differentiation from the output and that's going to be a function and what we're going to do is we're going to say use the button clicked event emitter the output and we get an option or a method on there called emit and we can emit any type of data that we like so I'm just going to pass it the value of the string of click and we can make use of that in the app component just shortly but the other thing that we need to do within the button component is actually trigger this function when something's happened in the button component and that's going to be basically a click event that we assign to the button element. So let's create a click event binding and that will be basically calling the this button clicked function which we just configured on the component a moment ago. So just clicking that button in our running app at the moment doesn't do anything and that's because in the app component level we need to kind of catch those outputs from the button component. So here in the app button where we define the input we can pass in all the details that we want for values for the inputs for this component but we can actually catch the output from it as well. So we do that with parentheses this time so the event that we created was called button clicked sorry the output that we created was called button clicked and then now when that event is received from here we can actually call a function on the app component and I don't think we've got one set up at the moment but let's create one called notify and it can also receive the event data which was essentially the string of click that we passed from the button component so that will probably give us an error but if we go to app component and just create that notify function actually let's just do it down here so we're creating a new function on the app component called notify and this notify function will receive the event which is the string that's been emitted from the button component so we'll just say uh, value and it's type of string and then we can just alert with the uh, value that's been provided from the event and so now if we click the button component the event that we configured inside of the button component has been fired and we get the alert popping up because this notify function has been called. So let me just run you through one more time what's happening here. So inside of our button component in the template, we've got a click event, which when we click it, we'll call this button clicked, which is a function which is on the button component, which in turn then emits a value through the output, which we defined here, called button clicked and of course we can change the value to anything else so we'll just say you know, just say anything for example and then this emitted value from the output is caught here in the app component template here when we reference the button clicked output using the premises and then in turn we've said when we get one of those events we want to call the notify function 
with the data received, which is defined on the app component, and that run in turn runs the alert. Let's see that running again. So that's just a simple example of a component with a single input and a single output. You're probably going to have more complex components that have multiple inputs and outputs, but hopefully this shows you the idea of how you can pass data in and retrieve data out of a component. Of course, the idea here is to actually make things reusable. And one thing that you might want to reuse are things like forms for user input. So if you want to check out how you can make user input forms with Angular, then check out this next video where we're going to go through forms in detail.